Have you ever wondered how did you miss turning off those lights, or turning off the stove? Worse still, have you ever forgotten to lock the door of your house or vehicle? We all have been in situations, when looking back, we think of ourselves as being foolish at the time of committing such mistakes. People sometimes miss fairly visible cues. Why do we do that? Is that an outcome of our physical, or mental limitations? Hello, and welcome to a brand new episode of, Mind Brunch. Human error is often identified as, a cause of industrial accidents. While it might appear to be plausible, the cause for upwards of 70% accidents is wrongly identified as, human error, which indicates that we may be missing something. Don Norman, an expert in the field of human-centric design, thinks otherwise. According to him, it's a fault with the design itself. Yes. You heard that right. Many products that we interact with every day, aren't designed to counter human errors. As an example, when a bridge collapses, the investigative team springs into action. They might discover a failure with an engineering component, and go on to improve the same in future designs. Why then, is a similar approach not taken, when it is determined to be a human error? Is it only the fault of the user, or is it because of the way products are sometimes designed? Many of us have been there. You are in a meeting, and should be noting down every point, in detail. Except, for a moment, you fade out of the discussion, and spring back in, after a while. You continue with your task, telling yourself it's okay. Basically, you are comforting yourself for that mental, slip. Now, will you empathize with a coworker when they get caught being lost during a meeting? Do you care to understand, why your teammate took that nap during working hours? In a normal office environment, it isn't surprising if people are tasked with, continuous work, that they need to finish on time, and precisely. Why then, should such understandably common errors be frowned upon, and employees wrapped for the same? Workers are often faced with the daunting challenge of multitasking, as well as working for long periods of time. Should we be surprised then, if a little interruption might lead them to commit errors? Human errors are frowned upon, like they are taboo. So what do most workplaces do in situations, where errors happen due to distractions? Punishment, levy fines, re-education or even blaming and shaming in public. While it may help the employer feel good about having, tackled the situation, such errors are bound to occur, again and again. So how can we know, what's the deal behind such errors, and hopefully correct them? Well, in quality departments within an industrial setup, there is a tried and tested method, that is used to find out the cause of a product failure. Root Cause Analysis When a machine breaks down, or when a part fails, the investigative team uses this methodology to get to the root cause of a problem, by repeatedly asking questions. Why did it break down? What caused the part to fail? Where in the machine did the snag occur? Why did the wires disconnect? They go on until they reach the point, where the first error transpired. Such analysis is also conducted in situations involving human errors. Except, unlike other cases, when the investigation leads to a worker, further reasoning stops. Once the problem is traced to a human error, all further questioning is halted. And this is systemic, everywhere. You can only guess the extent of this crack in judgment, when even defense departments fail to apprehend beyond, a human error. The Five Wise system, developed by Sakichi Toyota, and made famous as part of the Toyota production system, has helped Toyota become synonymous as being a gold standard in ensuring product quality. How do they do it? By asking a simple question repeatedly. Why? Of course, one doesn't stop when the fifth why question is answered. It is supposed to indirectly tell us to strive to get to the core issue. Let us take an example of a plane crash. The five whys may go something like this. Why did the plane crash? Because it went on an uncontrolled drive. Why didn't the pilot reverse the dive? Because he couldn't start the recovery immediately. Why was he unable to do so? Because the pilot might have been unconscious. Why was he unconscious? Because of a lack of oxygen. Why was he deprived of oxygen? 
may be due to a design flaw. As you see, by merely continuing in our quest to find the real reason, we went ahead of a human error, which was the pilot, not being able to recover the dive. If this analysis appears so simple in nature, then why don't we do it everywhere? Well, because of attitude. Certain workplaces develop a culture that is repellent to change. More so in the administration, to accept that certain problems are systemic and need to be redesigned, doesn't bode well for their perception of reality. Many such reports are collected, and put in the back burner. The story then repeats, sooner or later. There is however, another side to things. Many workers blame themselves for the error. They assume that, since they are so good at getting stuff done, surely, they must have erred to commit such a mistake. But how is anyone so sure of their abilities? We have previously discussed the illusion of confidence, which might help one understand the fallacy behind such situations. Surely, a little tweak in the workplace culture and practices can ensure such things don't happen anymore, but alas. Let's shift our focus to the objects that we interact with, during which an error may occur. The way they are built, many machines and other consumer products serve the main purpose only under the right conditions. For example, an oven is designed to primarily heat things up and bake. What designers often overlook is the need to design for humans, the ones who use the product. And this involves those times when the input isn't set correctly. With the sole focus fixed on completing the task, designs introduce rigidity in the way products work, thus forcing the user to serve the machine by providing the exact input every time they use it. You see, human beings are naturally creative. Errors are bound to happen when we expect them to stick to a fixed schedule and deliver consistently by completing tasks that might be repetitive and by nature, uninteresting. However, in the recent years, such designs have moved away from being activity-centric to being more humane. But there's another aspect that unfortunately, we are ourselves to blame for. Many of today's commercial establishments place a premium on time. No guess on what that means for the employees. High personal expectations, workplace culture, and distractions force employees to get it right, every single time. Failure to do so would mean a loss of money for the business and, who would like that? Imagine for a moment, the plight of nurses and doctors, juggling multiple tasks, treating patients, and registering the right dosage of medicine to them. Also, those who deliver goods and packages, racing against time, to complete all the scheduled deliveries. People manage most of the time. Sadly though, when they slip, they face wrath for the very behavior that drives them to complete their job otherwise. This is the first video in the series on, Design for Error. The main source is the book, The Design of Everyday Things, by Don Norman. You can find the link to purchase the book in the description, down below. What are your thoughts on our general understanding of human errors? Share it in the comments section. Give this video a thumbs up, if you learned something new, and share. Also, subscribe to the channel, if you haven't. Thank you for watching this episode of, Mind Brunch.